Okay, hi there. There are many, many uses of the concept of consumer surplus in your exams. So I thought I'd just spend a few minutes, if that's okay with you, uh, talking through three examples of how you can apply the concept of consumer surplus in your exams. So three examples, please, of topics where you can bring consumer surplus into your analysis and also your evaluation. Maybe you want to press the pause button on the video and think of your own examples of where consumer surplus would be a terrific technical term to bring into your discussions. Here are the three I've chosen. First of all, taxes and subsidies. So whenever you get a question on tax and subsidy, you can use consumer surplus to add to your analysis. For example, an indirect tax on a product such as the sugar tax, or even things like a carbon tax, that will tend, other things being the same, to increase prices and reduce consumer surplus. I'll show you an example of that in a second. While a government subsidy, of course, is the opposite of a tax, and if it's a subsidy to producers, that tends to lower prices and increase consumer surplus. So consumer surplus is the area underneath the demand curve and above the price. Let's take a, the market for sugary drinks, for example, where the price initially might be B, the quantity bought is D, and consumer surplus is the area A, B, C. Now, if we impose a tax on producers, that lifts the supply curve up by the amount of the tax, so the supply curve shifts to S2. Other things being the same, the price will go up to E from B and the quantity bought and sold will contract from D to G. The new equilibrium, of course, is at point F. As a result, consumer surplus will fall from ABC to AEF and that's a reduction of EFCB. Keep in mind in the exam, if you get a question on this, you want to show consumer surplus, make sure your demand curve cuts the y-axis. It's also a good idea to label key points rather than shade. Labelling is always clearer for the examiner to mark compared with shading. My second example is price discrimination, charging different prices to different groups of consumers for what is essentially the same good or service. A good example things like rail fares, ticket prices for various events. Now, consumer surplus. Well, if firms charge different prices for different groups of consumers, then typically... Consumer surplus will be lower for the group that pays the higher price. And they will tend to be that segment of the market where price elasticity of demand is, is low. And as a result, the firm can charge a, a premium price for those people. Whereas groups with a, a more price sensitive demand uh, will tend to be charged a lower price. And that uh, has a less effect on consumer surplus. Now, this looks like a very technical diagram. It is the third degree price discrimination diagram. It's the full version. Most people in the exam only draw the first two, the left and the middle one. And if you want me to walk through that with you, just search on YouTube for third degree price discrimination, choose a due, and I'll take you through that diagram right from the start to where we finish. The key point here is that I haven't labelled this, but you can see that on the, in market A, where there's a low price elasticity of demand, the price is high, and the firm is able to extract a lot of consumer surplus. Uh, in market B, where consumers are more price sensitive, the price is lower. They can still make a profit. Uh, there is still some consumer surplus there. Uh, but of course, if they charge too high a price, if, for example, they charged uh, PA for that group, then nobody would buy the product at all. So if you get a question on price discrimination, great question, very popular, good analysis might involve impacting, uh, talking about the impact on consumer surplus. My third example is monopoly. So a monopoly firm uh, will typically charge a higher price than a competitive firm. As a result, other things being the same, that will reduce consumer surplus. So the monopoly is using its market power to set prices above marginal cost, extracting consumer surplus and turning it into producer surplus. And you can then extend the analysis by looking at, for example, the impact of a, of a price cap. Some form of price regulation of monopoly could also be used. So here's the monopoly diagram. The profit maximizing monopolist produces at Q1, where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. They charge a price P1, well above unit cost C1, so they make a, a high profit there of P1, B, uh, C1, the shaded area. Uh, whereas the price is above marginal cost, which is D, and the price is P1, that point B. So the level of consumer surplus here is going to be A, B, P1, 
Whereas if the price equaled the marginal cost of supply, then the price would move down from B to C, and that would increase consumer surplus. The deadweight welfare loss there is area B, C, D. So consumer surplus, yes, can be used when discussing the impact of micro interventions and micro issues. It can also be used for macroeconomics. For example, a tariff on imported goods, which raises the price of imported goods and services and lowers consumer surplus. So you can also use consumer surplus in macro, but mainly I think micro in the exams. And examiners are looking for you to use welfare concepts as part of your analysis and evaluation. Well, I hope you found this useful. There are separate videos on all of these things, indirect taxes, price discrimination and monopoly. Loads of videos on the Tutor Tube YouTube channel. So please do search our playlists. If you found it useful, I'd love it if you press like or subscribe. But either way, take care, stay safe, stay curious and see you sometime soon.